Hi, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out Enter Sandman by Metallica, an all-time classic rock guitar song. I mean, it's so much fun to play. Great one for beginners as well, kind of like late beginners, intermediate really, I guess. It's, you know, there's a few kind of tricky bits in it, a few kind of bars needed and a lot of power chords and palm muting, that kind of thing. So it's not super easy like you just started playing guitar, but it's in, in the metal kind of uh, genre, it's not a particularly difficult song. And it, it's a really good fun one to play along as well. Uh, in this lesson, I'm going to be taking you through through eight riffs, which are the eight riffs that you're going to find in the song. But after you've learned them, what you'll need to be doing is listening to the original recording and figuring out the order of each one and how many times to go through each one. I'll give you some hints along the way, but it shouldn't be difficult to put the pieces together once you know what the bits are. So uh, let's get to a close up and check out how to play riff number one. So that's riff number one. It's a clean electric guitar and I'm pretty sure there's an acoustic guitar playing it as well. Now I'm going to show you first of all the authentic James Hetfield way of playing the song, but I'll also show you a slightly easier one if you're struggling with this. Uh, I always played it the easier way, but in researching for this video I've seen uh, plenty of videos of how he does it. So to start off with, we're going to put the second finger in the fifth fret of the fourth string and then little finger in the seventh fret of the fifth string, okay? So just fingers two and four to start off with, okay? So we've got the open thicker string, the seventh fret, and the fifth fret, okay? On the thickest three strings. Now the actual riff is going to play the open thicker string, then the fifth string, then the fourth string, and then third finger is going to go down and play this note here in the sixth fret of the thicker string, and then first finger will play the fifth fret on the thicker string, okay? So we play thicker string, fifth string, fourth string, then sixth fret on the thicker string, fifth fret on the thicker string, okay? That's a little bit awkward for me. I mean, I can do it. But when I first started playing it, I was like, God, this is a bit of a weird finger twister, really especially compared to the other way I'll show you in a second, but that's the authentic way to do it. There's plenty of video evidence of that, okay? So I would recommend learning it that way. It does sound more authentic as well, having this uh, fretted note. Now one thing to note though, it's quite important, is the rhythm, okay? So the very first note, the open string, is coming on the and after four. So let me give it to you real slow as a count now. So if you're going three and four and one, and two and three, 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 four and one. I tend to use all down picks on that, but it doesn't really matter. There's nothing particularly difficult in there, so you could use whatever picking you felt comfortable with. Now, I will show you this slightly easier one as well. Uh, it's basically this note here, played with the second finger, uh, is the fifth fret of the fourth string, and that same note can be played with the open G string, or the open third string. So instead of having this, you can play open thickest, seventh fret on the fifth string, and then open G, open third string and then you've got fingers two and one to play that riff. It's, it's kind of more or less the same, it's the same notes definitely, but you can hear the open string's got a little bit more twang. So for the authentic sound, It kind of just rings out different when you're using the open string. It could be on the original recording there's multiple layers and one of them is doing that because sometimes I thought uh, I could hear that note ringing out that way but you know video doesn't lie and you can definitely see James playing it that way live. So that's probably the one that you want to stick with. Another thing I'll mention quickly just on the sound as well as having a clean sound with a bit of chorus which I'll put some notes on the website about uh, getting that sound and using those effects. Where you pick the riff makes a difference. If you pick kind of up toward the neck the sound's quite round, whereas if you go back toward the bridge, it sounds a little bit more like the record to me, a little bit kind of, it's got a bit more ping on each different note, but uh, you know, we're getting pretty fussy there. 
Okay, riff number two, we have this. Okay, really, really simple this one. We've got eight down picks on the thicker string with palm mute. So one and two and three and four. And then we've got first finger sliding from the fifth fret to the seventh fret on the fifth string. Okay, one and two and three and four and a one and two and three and four and a one, two, three and four. Okay, the thing that you want to be looking out for here is the amount of palm mute because if you go too far toward the neck you don't get any note it's just a click so as you get back toward the bridge you're looking for the right amount of where the notes kind of thudding it's got a nice kind of body to it but you can still hear the pitch okay it's, it's quite important don't press too hard either with that hand otherwise you kind of bend the note out of tune a bit so experiment a little bit yourself and find the right position for your guitar because it feels different for everyone okay so it's kind of roughly an inch away i guess from the bridge for me but you need to find where it's at for you into riff number three <laughs> Okay, so we got here two thuds on the thickest E string, then third finger in the seventh fret of the fifth string, second finger in the sixth fret of the thickest string, then three more thuds on the thickest E, one, two, three, and then we play a little F power chord just using fingers one and three, so first finger in the first fret of the thickest string, third finger in the third fret of the fifth string, and you're going to flick first finger off right afterwards. Okay, and as you flick it off, you relax third finger so that note is not ringing out anymore either. I'm not 100% convinced about the, the flick off. I'm pretty sure it's there, otherwise I wouldn't be teaching it. But sometimes I convince myself that it's just played regular without the flick off. But I think you should learn it and uh, have a listen to the original recording and decide if you want to add it in yourself or not. So let me play that nice and slow. So three and four and one and two and three and four and a one and Two and three and four and a one and two and three and four and a one and two and three and four and a Okay, now riff number four is almost identical, but we add one more note of the riff, so we have this. Okay, one and two and three. So now we've got first finger going down the fifth fret of the thicker string. One and two and three and four and a one and two and three and four and a one and two and three and four and a one and Okay, of course that's staying with palm mute all of the way through there. Now the very last time it does that, it doesn't do the little flick off because it's going into riff number five which starts before the end of the bar okay so let me teach you riff number five first of all and then we'll go back and i'll explain what i mean so riff number five is this Okay, interesting thing here is the mixing up of the palm muted stuff with the open chords. So we're starting off here with an E power chord, which is just the open thicker string, first finger in the second fret of the fifth string. We're going to play that twice. Then it's like the riff before, seventh fret on the fifth string, sixth fret to fifth fret on the thicker string, three, four, and one, and two, and three. Four and. Okay, and this is important that this first chord is coming on the and after four and the and after one. Okay, so we have to count it three, four, and one, and two, and 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 three, four, and. Okay, just on beat four, I tend to do a little mute there as well. So it's all open. Three, 
four and one and two and three four and okay so i'm just using my palm again to just mute the strings there four and one okay and the end of that which I tend to refer to as riff 5b because it appears in lots of other parts of the song as well so rather than teaching it separately every time like you're going to learn this little part as riff 5b okay we'll talk about it again later but we've got this first chord again it's coming on the and after four so just before the bar line to g power chord third fret fifth fret now i tend to play it using fingers one and four for some reason i'm not exactly sure because i've always played and taught power chords using fingers one and three but for some reason quite often in these sort of rock songs i tend to use fingers one and four it doesn't make any difference up to you whatever you feel the most comfortable with but we're going to play that chord the g power chord then we're going to play the open e string then an F sharp power chord, so the same chord but down a semitone. Then the open E again. Then F sharp, G, F sharp. And then we've got the and after four, which will be this E chord. So we have three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. Okay, that last one, of course, is open without any palm mute. So again, three, four, and one, and two, and three and four and two three four and one and two and three and four and so the first chord is open without any palm mute then palm mute open second fret with the chord open second fret third fret second fret open okay open e that is okay let me play the whole of riff five again so it's doing the first riff three times then this variation so we have this three four and one and two and 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 three and four and okay i just noticed then as well Putting a little bit of vibrato there on that last note with the first finger, the fifth fret of the thicker string. Okay, so into riff number six, which is what's played under the verse vocals. So very, very simple. We just got one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Okay, so we've got three bars of a whole, pretty much a whole bar of open E. One and two and three and four and. Okay, and it's just a little F power chord again. You could use fingers one and three. I'm using one and four. It doesn't make any difference. And that's just the and after four. Okay, and there's three bars of that. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two. Three. There's that 5B riff that I told you about. And remembering that first chord is coming on the and after four. Okay, the same place the little F chord's coming. Listen. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, here we go into riff number seven, which is this. Okay, it's probably the hardest riff in the song, although it's not difficult, but you do have to have a bit of a bar going on here. Now, uh, there's quite a few different guitars layered up here on the original one, so it never sounds exactly like the record. Don't be disappointed if you don't, because you need a kind of couple of clean guitars doing stuff where notes are ringing out very clearly and some heavy ones where the notes are palm muted. So, you know, it, what I'm teaching you is a kind of a blend of the parts, if you like. So you're gonna bar the thickest four strings uh, I mean, you end, probably end up barring all of them, but you're only targeting the thickest four strings with your first finger at the second fret. And then you're going to put third finger down in the fourth fret of the fourth string. Okay? You're going to play the thickest string, then the fourth string, 
then the uh, third string, then you can use second finger to go down in the third fret of the fifth string. You'll play that and then lift it off to get that reve reveal the second fret, the other one under the bar, and then play this note here again, which is the uh, fourth fret of the fourth string. Okay, so the pattern, sixth string, fourth string, third string, fifth string, twice, which will be the third fret and the second fret, and then back to fourth string. Okay, now one thing that I am doing, just to be aware of, is a little bit of muting with the picking hand, in that this first few notes, I want them to ring out, but when I go here to play this note on the fifth string, I'm actually using the edge of my thumb just to lightly touch on the thicker string. Here, it's just muted the thicker string just to stop, otherwise it's, it gets a little bit too murky to, to my ear anyway. As I said, we're, we're kind of copying a lot of layered guitars there, but... That's the kind of idea. It's not particularly difficult, but again, you know, trying to keep the right strings ringing out and with, without too much extraneous noise uh, getting involved can be a little bit tricky, but it's not a difficult one, don't be scared of it. Okay, riff number eight. <laughs> Okay, so I'm kind of merging a couple of parts together here, but uh, let's get through the power chord section first of all. So we're playing an F sharp power chord. Now I normally play the three note power chord here, so second fret, fourth fret, fourth fret, and then on the fifth string, I'm resorting to just the first finger and fourth finger, little mini power chords for C and B. But you could use big power chords, like that, or just little ones throughout. It's hard to say exactly what one's getting used because there are so many different layers of guitar uh, going on in that. So um, I'll show you how I do it and you can make up your own mind as to which variation you choose. So we've got F sharp, then it goes to the C, which is the uh, uh, third fret root on the fifth string, down a semitone to B, back to the F sharp, and again, back to the F sharp. Last time, going to an E power chord, an open E power chord, so open, second fret, second fret. Okay, again, rhythmically really important. We're starting on the beat, the first one, so we have three, four, one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four, and two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, and one. Two, three, four. Again, then we've got our little uh, 5B riff again. Very slight variation of uh, riff 5B there at the end, just the first chord coming right on the beat. One and two and three and four and right at the end. Okay, so the rhythm part again, and then I'll, I'll show you how to add the little uh, Kirk Hammett line in it. So we've got three, four, one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and Okay, that would be the main Hetfield part, but when you're just stopping and holding that low E for so long, it kind of sounds a little bit naked, I think, and there's no vocal in that part, so it's nice to have the little Kirk Hammett fill. Okay, so here we're doing the third finger in the seventh fret of the fifth string. Then we're going to the fifth fret on the fourth string, back to that root note again, which is the third finger in the seventh fret of the fifth string. Then we lay it down to play the seventh fret of the fourth string, back to that root note again, the seventh fret of the fifth string. Then third finger is going to slide or move, we don't hear the slide, but it's going to slide up there to play the ninth fret on the fourth string. And then we're going to play the open G string. And the reason we use the open G string there is a transition to get back to the chord. So the riff is starting on the and after one, so one and two and three and four and, and then we've got to get right back 
to our F sharp chord, okay? So the E chord is gonna be happening on the and after four, if I count from the bar before, so three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one. Okay, it happens again, it, it happens twice, that little fill. So if I play you through the chorus now, we got three, four, one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and Okay, just note again that that last riff, the, the, it's essentially 5B, but that first chord is happening right on the beat. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. So now that you know the eight riffs that you need to play this song, the next step is putting the pieces together, right? And uh, what I would strongly recommend is you make in your own little tab of each of the different riffs, and then by listening to the original recording, you can just write down how many times the riffs are played, or like in, in my case, I've got the riff one, and I've got until build, okay? So there's a little bit, you can hear the drums kind of building up before the electric guitar comes in. And then it's four times through riff two, four times through riff three, eight times through riff four, twice through riff five, uh, I haven't got the other, how many times for Riff 6 written down there, I guess I was just listening to it, but you know, th that kind of thing will really help, particularly later on in the song. It's very clever as well, the very ending of the song, uh, there's a bit where the, the, the chorus repeats itself, so you leave out the little 5B riff, and it just kind of repeats around the chorus, and then it goes kind of backwards and plays Riff 3, Riff 2, Riff 1. It's a, it's a very clever arrangement actually, the, you know, great band and really... Uh, well-constructed songs, well-produced, well-constructed, multi-layered uh, masterpieces of rock. I'm sure you're going to have a lot of fun playing this tune. It's a great song for playing along with the original recording. Loads and loads of fun, the kind of jamming along with the band. Um, you do have to make sure that you get the bits in the right order. That's always the kind of the challenge playing along uh, with the original recording there. Uh, I am thinking of doing a few other Metallica songs as well. I might do the solo for this one, but if there's a particular Metallica song that you'd like to see, let me know in the comments there. I'm thinking of maybe uh, Fade to Black or maybe Masters of Puppets. Uh, I've already done Seek and Destroy. That's on the website if you're a Metallica fan. It's probably my favourite Metallica song, I really love that, the Kill em All kind of era of Metallica, really, I think it was Cliff Burton on bass, just really give it some, you know, really, not to diss the new Metallica, because it's, you know, fantastic band, and they're still rocking just as hard, and they're older than me, you know, um, so anyway, please subscribe if you like what I do, and do go and check out all the lessons on the website if you're struggling with any of the techniques involved, and I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon, take care of yourselves, bye-bye.